You're listening to Your Purpose and Business Podcast, where we connect you to possibilities. I'm your host, Raquel Walters, a two-time best-selling author, millennial speaker, corporate trainer, advocate, and clinical social worker at heart. Your Purpose and Business Podcast will connect you with everyday successful people who will share their impactful stories, insights, challenges, failures, and triumphs on how they're navigating the working world, whether by climbing the 95 corporate ladder or starting, growing, and scaling their business. So grab your pen and notebook because you'll want to implement the nuggets and tools, strategies, is shared in every episode. Class is in session. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Your Purpose and Business podcast. And I have the pleasure of speaking with Dr. Shana B. Van Ness. So Dr. Shana B. Van Ness, known as Dr. Shana, is a certified business executive and a life coach. Also known as the committed action queen, she specializes in personal growth, relationship, career, business, and executive coaching. She maintains a private practice in Atlanta, Georgia, and Brooklyn, New York. As a private practitioner, she works with a broad spectrum of clients. And in addition to being a professional coach, she also presented nationally to general audiences speaking on the topics of leadership success, the art of mastering relationships, organizational strategy, and many other areas. She has also been featured on various podcasts, dropping drools are right on time for those that listen in. She is a collaborative, solution-focused, results-oriented coach, and through this approach, she provides support and practical feedback to help clients effectively address personal life changes that will resolve into extraordinary results. She also integrates coaching techniques and helpful assignments to offer a highly personalized program tailored to meet specific client needs. With compassion and understanding, she works with her clients to help build on your strengths and attain the personal growth they seek by living life in committed action. Dr. Shana, it's a pleasure and an honor to have you on the Your Purpose and Business podcast. Welcome. Thank you so much. I'm very honored to be here. Thank you. You're very welcome. And so Dr. Shana, I asked all my guests, so tell me something about yourself that's not included in this beautiful bio of yours. Oh, wow. Um, something that's not included, maybe personal about me. Uh, well, I am a vegetarian, right? And um, even personally, I have four children. People don't always believe that I have four children. Wow, you look amazing. Yeah, thank you. And my oldest is 25, then 22, 13, and three. So no one ever like really believes me when I say that. But yeah, yeah. Nice. <laughs> so not only am I balancing business and work, it, family, husband, everything. So yeah. Wow, wow. That is amazing. And thank so you. Dr. Shana, like, what would you say um, is your purpose? Because you are on a, a Your Purpose and Business podcast. And even though I know you master a lot of things and you do many things, right? Mm -hmm. What is your purpose? How would you define that for yourself? So I would define my purpose as being a servant leader, right? Mm -hmm. I am clear that I am a leader, um, but I'm also clear that in the role as a leader, I also get to serve. And one way I get to serve is in that capacity as being a coach, right? And I looked at my own gifts and talents and just who I have been throughout my life, right? My husband and I joke about this every day, right? He's like, you just, you keep talking. And I'm like, yes, I keep talking, but I listen. And not only do I listen, I'm thinking, right? So um, I would define my passion is to be in support of others and be in support of others' success and using my voice and my ability to listen to support others. Yes, nice, nice. I, I love that. I love that. And so Dr. Shana, tell us, like, when did you realize that you wanted to become, you know, a life coach, a certified business, an executive, a consultant? Like, when did that seed got planted, if that, that makes sense um, in your brain? Yeah, so I would say I was always that friend or that go-to person that people would just come and talk to and uh, ask questions, right? And one thing I can say is I never invoked my own opinion, right? But I asked 
those thought provoking critical questions that really drew out solutions for individuals. So I, I would just say just naturally, I was always that person that people felt comfortable with sharing themselves with. Um, I, then I would say, Back in 2015, I was supporting another friend who was ready to leap into entrepreneurship and supported her through that entire process. And after doing that, she said, wow, you should just be like a coach. Like you, you help me balance the life things while trying to launch a business. And like both of them for me go hand in hand, right? Because yeah. we're all individuals. If, if, if we have things in life where we're stuck, then that's going to translate and transfer over into our business vision. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the life coaching and business coaching came together, like just really gelled together really well. Mm -hmm. And then I found myself a few years after that, um, working with individuals and meeting individuals who were at a certain ceiling, whether it was in their professional career or in their own business, where they were ready to take that next leap into the executive role, right? And what that looked like. So my purpose is to take individuals on that journey and be supportive in that journey because results are... are just one-time results, right? We're living every day. And as we grow, you know, our compass changes. And mm -hmm. that's how that executive piece came into play. And mm -hmm. while doing the executive coaching, that lended me the opportunity to also step in to do consulting in mm -hmm. strategic development, organizational management, change management, leadership development within organizations. So it was, it was like an organic growth, right? And again, as I coach, I'm coaching myself, right? I'm not uncoachable, right? So as I'm speaking, I'm listening to the things that I'm saying and realizing that, okay, I've achieved this result, but what's next, right? Because we're all in a place for growth. Right, right. I, I love it. And you know, when you were talking, it got me thinking because especially for anyone in the helping field, you could be a, a, a coach, you could be an executive coach, a life coach. I mean, you could be a mentor, you could be a nurse, a doctor. I feel like um, at some point, you know, um, it's not only just skill set. Of course, you build that over time, you're trained, but also it's an innate ability. And just to hear that, you know, since you were younger, you know, family friends would always come to you for your um, objective opinion or advice or feedback. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's no surprise that it led you down this journey um, and how you've grown from not only being a life coach, but an executive coach. You're working in corporate strategic planning. You spoke about all of these things and how you've evolved, right? Mm -hmm. And the reason why I wanted to point that out, Dr. Shana, is because, you know, um, a lot of the millennials and Gen Xers these days, and, and you you know, I specifically wanted to speak to them because, you know, a lot of times um, they think, and I'm a millennial too, so I will just say that, but, you know, with my peers, um, that success is overnight, right? Oh. And, and, and so, um, oh, if I'm not at XYZ yet, if I'm not making that six-figure salary a year yet, or I'm, I'm not, you know, um, you know, a manager yet, to, if, if I work a job or, you know, the processes that goes on and the growth and the failure, you know? And so for you, um, I want to pose that question um, because I do know you have practices both in Atlanta, Georgia, as well as uh, New York in Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. And um, what was that process like for you? Like, like, how did you open up one, your first business and then the second one, expand it to the second one? Like, what's that process if people are looking and, and listening and, and wanting to, to know the steps of, okay, I want to start my practice. I want to start a business because I know that I have these skills and I'm great at it. I'm trained. I'm credentialed. How do I expand? How do I grow? Right. So I think for me, um, growing and expanding came at a point in my life where the timing was right. Mm -hmm. And I'll say, um, sometimes you just know when. 
And when I made that transition, you know, I, again, I, I've, I've always maintained the practice in Brooklyn, New York. I'm born and raised in Brooklyn, New York, grew up in Brooklyn, New York. Okay. And it, it was a point in time where I said, I don't want to do this space anymore, right? And being willing to take the risk to, uh, you know, a, res a responsible risk, right? To just change my space and be okay with changing the space and understanding that um, for me in the work that I do, I get to do that along with other coaches really in a virtual space, right? So, um, you know, for me, it was just trying to manage uh, my growth in other place, looking at my network. Because again, as I went on this journey, I'm building my network, right? I, I did not allow myself to stay stuck yes. in one place. And I think, you know, what, what a lot of people, not just millennials, just, just people in general, we, 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 we must begin to feel comfortable being uncomfortable. Right? Yes. Because, you know, when we have a vision, and, and again, it could be that, that Gen X or whomever, I, I want to be a manager, I will be a man, okay, you will, you will, trust you will, but what steps will you take to get there? Because again, it's steps, it's not, overnight is not a step. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Right. So yes. you have to be authentic and, and honest with oneself that uh, I have to take the steps. And sometimes it's just even coaching individuals to think about how we were when we were children. Yes. It, we took steps to walk. We crawl, we roll, and we was okay. Mm -hmm. with we, we bruised okay. ourselves. We got right we back up. Yeah. On the ground. Okay. Get up, roll around, stand up, fall down. We were okay with that. Yeah. However, yeah. as we grew, we began to place so much value on, well, what happens when I fall? What happens if I fail? But, 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 but our children are learning their steps, mm -hmm. right? So, you know, one thing I would say is, uh, again, and I, I've created my own success formula. I encourage people to create theirs, but for me, it's focus. What am I focused on, right? So focus plus discipline multiplied by perseverance, understanding that things will get in the way, but I choose to persevere. I choose to take those steps, right? I choose to take those steps with discipline. I can't do this right now. Yeah, I can't, no, I can't go out tonight because I got to get up for work on time and early because I want to show up as my best self because I will be that manager right um so that's the discipline and that's the focus combined with it right so again just just understanding that it's a process uh don't control you know sometimes we try to control the process right? We say, hey, I will be the manager. I'm going to be this, but life takes us through mountains and valleys on purpose for a purpose, yeah. right? On purpose for a purpose. And we sit, we question why. Well, it's not for us to question why. We had to get to this place in order to get to that place. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah. I, I love your answer for that because that's the common theme, especially if I may say in these Instagram streets, right? These social media streets, because, um, you know, you see a lot of people see celebrities, you know, and half this stuff is not even real. It's fake. It's, you know, facade It's for show on Instagram, for instance, or all these other social media platforms. But I loved what you said, um, finding your own recipe that works. Yes. But I think that we can all adapt to what your recipe of or formula of the focus, the discipline, right? Perseverance yes. and all those things, because those are great recipe um, in order to attain whatever goal it is it is that you know people want to attain, whether that's climbing the corporate ladder or right. rising that skill from corporate and starting a side hustle and eventually working right. in side hustle full time, right? And so um, I think that is very important that you did mention that. I want to thank you for that. And so, which kind of leads me into a lead on question, Dr. Shana. Um, tell us, um, if you may, um, a, a time, maybe it's significant or not, but um, 
a time that you had to face some sort of challenge or failure and how have you kind of risen up or grown through that challenge? Oh, yes, so I would say, you know, um, I think well, we all as individuals experience failure. And I think for me, it was similar to what we talked about before, right? I was in that space building my business and I'm not thinking that it's going fast enough or the way that I wanted it to go. And I would say I was on maybe 200 miles an hour, just work, 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 focus, 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 you know, the business, the business, the business to the point in which um, I was neglecting myself, right? And see that neglect of myself was a failure because as a result that lended itself to stress, yeah. right? Just stress and just being tired, Right. And then, but in my mind, I'm, I'm, I'm placing this value on, I have to get the business up. I have to go to this event. I have to meet with these people. I have to, I have to, I have to. And then my own body just was like, no, you're done. Right. And then um, placing value on the idea of not working so hard actually created more of a ripple effect of, and I won't say failure, but maybe downtime and of a challenge because I was down for more time than I should have been if I just listened to my own body, right? So, you know, again, that was a huge challenge for me. A challenge for me was um, getting to the place and space to manage my work and my life, mm -hmm. right? And, you know, even, even now, some, some, some days I'm just sitting here just tapping away on the laptop. My husband say enough. And I say one more thing. He said, nope, enough. Mm -hmm. and, but, but again, I've gotten to that place where I'm also able to listen to those who support me to say, no, enough. You've done enough. It's okay. Right. And, and sometimes we get into that, that place of beat up where we beat ourselves up, which to me also, I define that as feeling you're beating yourself up for what, for what? Right. Um, so, so yeah, my, my biggest challenge, I think in my life was the work life balance mm -hmm. and I, and, 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 you know, and then God has a way of shifting things, right. Because I have a three-year-old, so that created even more balance mm -hmm. and it was his way of saying, yeah, no, you got this mm -hmm. and you got this, right. And you, 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 you can, you choose we want to put that put that time in so that that was my biggest challenge yes i i love it i love it and i love how you 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 um were transparent and you brought that down because so many people can relate even myself i can relate to that you know sometimes it's like go 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 and not knowing when to stop especially when um, you're a visionary and you want things to be done a certain way. I mean, right. um, and you spoke to the wellness aspect too. It takes longer to recover when you're burnt out yes. right? instead of building in self-care time, you know, rest time, yes. you know, because yes. you recover faster, right? Yes. Absolutely. Even now it's like, I'll schedule it. Every Like everything for me, I schedule it. Whatever appointment, I schedule yes. it. Even if it's, listen, I got to go to the nail so I schedule it to make sure I stop what I am doing and put that time in for me. Yes. Yes. Right? Oh. And, yeah. I, and I believe that's very valuable because, you know, life is happening, you know, whether you're working in corporate or you're an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. juggling both, have the kids, a caregiver, you know, or, you know, and get going to school. I mean, there's so many things that we're all doing, right? And, and these days, time seems very limited so i think that the strategies or, or some of the tips that you've given that has helped you is is universal um that we can all implement and mm -hmm. this is why dr shana is a uh, executive business and life coach because she does fit into any area of your life and or business that you are having a challenge with so that you know she can provide you um with the proper guidance and directions and tools and strategies to use to implement to make changes to make your life and and or business better right and so dr shana tell us a little bit more what do you provide do you provide i know you have your one-on-one -on -one clients do you have any groups do you have any programs like tell us more about your business Absolutely. 
Yeah. Yes. So I do one-on-one coaching, of course. Um, I do coach in groups, right? And that's more so done, of course, with, you know, organizations or groups of individuals, no more than four to six individuals, right? And I also offer coaching programs. So a lot of my coaching programs are around living life in committed action. It's a 90-day journey where you identify maybe three areas of your life that you are perhaps stuck in and we work uh, together. Um, This is one-on-one in a 90-day program to actually do that. Um, At the business level for my uh, organizations that I work with, I provide customer service coaching, right? Because people want to grow their business. I provide um, being culturally responsive, right? A lot of businesses need support in that area. Uh, You know, so I have a gambit of programs, strategic development, strategic planning, uh, how to come in and do change management within your organization. And ultimately in the business realm, um, since, you know, our world shifted and was impacted by COVID, it's really supporting businesses to uh, be become resilient and how do we look at being innovative and strengthening our resiliency just in case right this time it was COVID who knows what it'll be five years 10 years from now right so you know a lot of people go into business and open up businesses and um, aspire to be entrepreneurs to create a legacy Right. And when we think of creating a legacy, that's just not here today and going tomorrow. So a lot of the work that I have done with businesses since COVID is really uh, supporting them with being innovative. What does innovation look like and what does it look like to maintain resiliency? Right. Because when we want to build a legacy, we must ensure that we are resilient during good times or bad times within our own economy. So, yeah. So, so Dr. Shana, it's so important that you said that. And I, and I really want to pose this question because um, especially for a minority community, right, um, specifically our Black men and women, um, mm-hmm. You know, you spoke about legacy, you spoke about um, definitely rest and recovery. Those things um, go hand in hand for resiliency, right? Um, right. But, but at the same time, um, we do um, want to empower and educate and inspire um, these Black women and women. We do want to empower and educate and inspire these Black men and women, especially when it comes on uh, to you know, building a a legacy as it pertains to either owning a business, having other investments, even if you're a professional man or woman, you know, um, you know, we're career women here too, but at the end of the day, how can we um, pass that on? And one of the things why I brought this up is because especially what I've found in um, our Black community, we don't necessarily like to invest in coach and mentors. But at the same time, when you look at the greats, whether it's uh, great businessmen and women, celebrities, athletes, they have a team of people surrounding them, coaches and mentors for every single specific area that they want to be developed. And mm-hmm. they're investing in them. And in turn, they're helping, um, you know, these greats to, to thrive. And so why shouldn't we do the same? And so if you could speak to that, please. Yeah, so you make a very uh, valid point. And I think it really uh, begins with just a owning and accepting that you don't know what you don't know, right? Mm -hmm. You don't know what you don't know. And the other piece to that is, it's okay not to know, but then why choose to not get the support necessary to then know and learn, right? And and based on everything you said, that's what I internalized by what you said. And I do think that it is important in our community and in our culture, where we begin to um, cultivate the mindset of having a coach 
coach or having that guidance or that mentor or that individual that's going to support you climb right? And that's how I like to phrase it. You know, another phrase that I, I always say is I, I have a responsibility to lift as I climb. Who am I being if I'm climbing, but I'm not lifting others? But with that being said, you know, others who, who want that support also have to be willing and want to get that support. Um, again, I think, you know, and I, I work with organizations as well that support young people in understanding entrepreneurship from seven years old and up, right? There are organizations out there, right, that, that do this work. And, um, you know, for, for me, it's really tapping in and even providing resources to individuals who, it, let's listen, some of us, we grown, we grown, we not go, we are not going to get the coaching and that's okay. But if we can begin to educate our young people and connecting them to the resources and organizations that will support them, that is us allowing our mindset to shift. And if it's not for us, but it's for them, the next generation that is going to, that is going to come up. But, you know, ultimately I think, you know, as you made it so, so clear that people who are, 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 are in a particular industry, they hire coaches to support them reach their next level, right? Um, we need to begin to value who we are, right? And to understand that we matter mm -hmm. to then invest in ourselves to get us to that next place and be okay with not knowing what you don't know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There are people who know what you want to know and people who can support you in getting to where you want to be, but you have to, you know, release your own self-judgment, right? Release your own ego to be willing to step into that space to say, I matter enough to get the knowledge that I need and support and coaching from someone who can get me to that next place. Yes, yes, absolutely. I mean, Dr. Shana is dropping the gems, hashtag gems on the Your Purpose and Business podcast. And, you know, I'm hiring a coach um, specifically, um, yeah, such as uh, Dr. Shana definitely will, will um, shortcut, you know, your way to success, you know. And so you're not wasting time. You're not feeling uh, frustrated, you know, not to mm. say challenges and failures won't come about, but at least you have a roadmap that's proven, a proven right. path. And it's, it's, and you know it. And one thing I always say to my clients listen, when we get to the point of clarifying your vision to achieve extraordinary results, the work is going to be hard. But you know what lessens that, lessens it being hard? It is now your heart work. So your hard work has become your heart work because you're wor working in your vision. You are working towards that vision, walking in your purpose. So the hard work is hard work once you clarify your vision to achieve extraordinary results. Yes, yes. There we go. There we go. So Dr. Shana, share with the audience how they can get in contact with you. Yes, absolutely. So you can contact Dr. Shanna at my website, www.drshannav.com. I'm on Facebook, Dr. Shanna V Coaching. I'm on Instagram at Dr. S.B. Van Ness. I'm on Twitter at S.B. Van Ness. Um, and I, you can Google me, right? I am, I am out there. Yes, absolutely. And before I let you go, Dr. Shana, uh, please share with us, is there a routine, a ritual, something that you do typically on, you know, each day to kind of keep you grounded? Um, okay. What is that thing? The thing that I do every day is just the ritual is, um, you know, I wake up, I pray, I'm grateful to be alive. I'm grateful that I can see, touch, taste, and hear, right? I live in gratitude, understanding that uh, I, I get to live in abundance in a world of reciprocity. Um, you know, so I meditate on understanding that uh, I, I, I get to choose to be my best self in every situation throughout the day. 
Yeah, I love it. I love it. And so, guys, it's a pleasure again to have Dr. Shana on the Your Purpose and Business podcast. Please, we would love to hear your comments. Definitely share and like um, this podcast with all of your friends, your family, anyone that you believe that would find value in all the tools and the gems that um, Dr. Shana has shared with us. And remember, guys, always be good to yourself and we'll catch you in the next episode. Bye for now. Thank you for listening. If you've loved this episode, let's stay in touch. Head over to RachelWalters.com and subscribe to my email list so that I can send you updates on new episodes, exclusive motivational nuggets, and insider knowledge that's only shared when you join our community. Please don't forget to subscribe to this podcast and leave a review as I want to know your thoughts about every episode. Follow me on Instagram at Your Purpose and Business Podcast. And remember, your life is beautiful and this is a part of your journey. So embrace it. Speak to you soon.